take place. And its people are different in many ways. But when it comes to eating, they have one important thing in common. Everywhere on Earth, people eat bread of one kind or another. White bread and dark, long and short, round and square, many different sizes and shapes. South of the border, they pat it flat and round from hand-ground cornmeal. A quick baking on a hot griddle and you have the tortilla. And with a tortilla, you don't need knives and forks. Just roll it and scoop. Now, here is a bread of a different color and shape. It's Swedish limpa, a favorite in a land where they really eat a lot of bread. In France, they make bread by the yard. It's called flu, and little mademoiselle just can't wait to break off the end of that nice, crusty loaf. Speaking of crusty bread, these breadsticks are all crust. No meal in Italy is complete without them, though sometimes round white bread holds the center of the table. Oddly enough, here in the Russian Ukraine, wheat center of the world, the most popular bread is pumpernickel made from rye flour. But that's not so surprising when you consider that in China, greatest rice growing country, a favorite is steamed bread made from wheat flour. It's filled with meat or sweets, and either way, it's all right with little Miss Keith. In India, customs and costumes and bread making have changed but little in centuries. That method of making flatbread called roti was used over 3,000 years ago. Only a few simple ingredients are necessary, but it takes many hours to prepare each day's bread for the family. In America, thousands of uniform loaves are baked at one time. Quantity, yes, and quality as well. For the modern baker has combined scientific knowledge with mechanical ingenuity. And from carefully selected ingredients, he produces for American families this food of all nations in its most nourishing form. Today's bread is more than ever an energy-giving and body-building food. Its ingredients contain almost all the elements of diet necessary to nourish and sustain the human body. The story of bread making actually begins in the wheat fields. Out of the riches of the earth grow the tiny golden nuggets. When the grain is matured to perfect ripeness in the sun and the rain, it is harvested. Then with care and speed, the grains are separated and shipped in carloads to the mill. When the wheat arrives at the mill, samples from each carload are taken to the laboratory for testing. Here is that operation which gives us the well-known expression separating the wheat from the chaff. The separation tells the miller the proportion of chaff to wheat in each carload. Then the wheat is tested for moisture content. After the grain has been washed, scraped, and tempered, it's crushed and pulverized by a series of graduated rollers, the first step in turning grain into fine white flour. A network of sieves inside the big shaker separates the crushed grain into many different sizes. The miller follows the process with periodic samplings. And now the last step in assuring fineness, sifting through silk reels or screens. 
is ground and shaken and sifted until when the flour at last goes into the bags, it has passed through 17 grinding operations and over 180 separations. This is the miller's contribution to modern bread making, flour that's fine and pure. But fineness is not enough for the baker. He'll ask a lot of questions about that flour before it's made into bread. He'll want to know the mineral content of the flour. Samples are subjected to high temperature. All the other elements in the flour burn off, leaving only the mineral to be weighed. Then, too, the baker must know exactly how much water the flour will absorb, so that the correct proportion of water to flour can be maintained in the mixing process. A titration test is made to determine the amount of protein. The protein content gives the flour its elasticity or ability to expand in the bread making process. As a further check on the expanding properties of the flour, a test loaf is baked and measured by displacement tests. The amount of bird seed that is displaced by the loaf accurately indicates its size. When these tests are completed, the flour is placed in an air-conditioned room for aging. The bags are carefully stacked for proper circulation of air. From the various lots in the storage room, several flours are chosen to produce one blend with all the properties necessary to make uniformly good bread. Down the hopper into the mixer, where exact proportions of flour, water, and yeast are combined into a first mix, or sponge as the baker calls it, The mixing time is carefully controlled so that the sponge will have just the right consistency. And now it's on its way to the fermentation room where the sponge will develop and grow. Here, temperature and humidity are carefully controlled so the yeast in the mixture can grow properly. When the yeast grows in the sponge, it forms thousands of tiny bubbles. Because the sponge is elastic, it inflates and becomes light in texture. Fermentation is so important to texture that this process will be repeated three times before the bread is actually baked. Each time, the baker will deflate it each time leaving only the amount of air necessary to continually improve the texture. Now the sponge goes back to the mixer for the additional ingredients which will change it from sponge to dough. Carefully selected ingredients are measured to follow an exact formula, each adding certain values so that every loaf will be good tasting and light in texture and will contain all the elements of diet necessary to good health. Minerals, proteins, carbohydrates. And there's one more element, small in proportion but mighty important, vitamins. You hear a lot about vitamins, but here's a situation that will help us to understand how vitamins work. Let's say all the food you eat is like a nut. A nut isn't much good to you unless you can get at the kernel inside. Just so, the food you eat hasn't much value to you unless you can use the bodybuilding elements in it. Vitamins act on your food in a way like this nutcracker acts on this nut. Vitamins release the good properties in the food, so your body can use them to the best advantage. Scientists tell us that there are many different kinds of vitamins and that each one does a different job. But to make it easy to understand, we'll let the crayon of Lee Blair, the cartoonist, show us the special job each one does. The A vitamin helps keep eyes bright and bright. It can also add life to hair. Vitamin B helps food to help you grow. And that goes for all the vitamin B complex family. They all work together on the carbohydrates in your food to transform them into energy.
Vitamin C is an aid to teeth and gums. And if you want the skin that poets write about, be sure this vitamin is working for you. When vitamin D cooperates with the calcium in your food, it builds big, strong bones and strong teeth, too. Look what this sunshine vitamin did for Mr. Dinosaur. With enough vitamin E, your muscles can be in the Hercules class. Well, that gives you an idea of some of the things vitamins do for you. Now, back to that mixer where the good ingredients being mixed into bread will give vitamins plenty to work on. One of the secrets of baking success lies in the blending. The better the blending, the better the loaf. Here again, the mechanical methods of the modern baker prove their worth. When the dough is released, it's a smooth, perfect blend. When the lever on the side of the trough is pushed, the bottom opens and the dough drops to the divider to be cut into loaf size. So accurate is the bite of the big divider's jaw that checking seems almost an unnecessary step in the control system. For the weight of the loaf will vary scarcely a fraction of an ounce and the temperature scarcely a degree. Down they go and round they go. After a whirl on the rounder, they will emerge with rough edges smooth, texture improved and almost perfectly round. Rolling from the rounder chute, they go into trays for an elevator ride to the overhead proofer, where yeast goes to work again in an atmosphere of the correct temperature and humidity. Again, the dough rises as the parading silver trays carry it to the mold. It may look like a jelly roll, but it's still a loaf of bread. That's just the baker's way of forcing out excess air. Another roller continues the process until all the air is gone. So that when the dough emerges, it's in good shape for baking and the perfect shape for the baking pan. Loaded racks are wheeled to the final proofing room. In these cabinets, the dough will rise until it's the right size for baking and is just light enough. A battery of ultraviolet lights in the cabinets adds further assurance of purity. And so at last, the loaves are ready for baking in the huge oven. At the receiving end, the pans are placed on a slowly moving heart that will carry them through the hundred foot ovens as dough changes into bread. Loaves in endless succession are carried through carefully controlled heat chambers. The temperatures are maintained at all times by a battery of fireboxes. Steam tubes located above and below the baking chambers provide constant heat. The baker regulates the amount of heat both above and below the loaves, so they will rise and brown properly. And there they are, perfect loaves, round and full, delicious golden brown. At the end of the baking process, the loaves slide out of the oven. They're taken from the pans and move on to be cooled. A mechanical arm measures off a row that will exactly fill a single tier of the cooling chamber. The speed is regulated so they're the correct temperature for slicing by the time they reach the end of the cooler. From here, they toboggan to the slicing machine.
Bread slicing is just another way in which the baker makes life easier for his customers. A wheel draws the loaf through a row of fast-moving blades, and out come perfect slices of convenient size. And here's the baker's last assurance of delivering the best possible bread. Airtight wrapping. All the freshness and flavor are sealed in. Each day, a fleet carries thousands of loaves of bread across the countryside. Here, Mrs. America can provide bread for her family as simply as this. From these loaves, she'll serve not one food, but many, for bread is the food of a hundred personalities. At breakfast, in league with poached eggs. We're dressed up with syrup, French toast. At luncheon, croutons, toasted and floating in cream soup. Or edging a casserole for decoration or flavor. Bread rolled into crumbs on chop. And what's turkey without bread stuffing? Even as dessert, bread pudding. Good to taste. Good for you. Inexpensive. Easy to use. But in any form, the bread you eat builds health. Supplies the energy you need to keep you going. Whether you're going to work, going to play, or just going to grow up, you'll do it better if an important part of your diet is the energy food of the people of all the world. Good bread. Thank you.